confidence interval estimation population proportion. Notice the freaky fishes. This reminds us of this portion So far, the two confidence intervals that we've considered have both involved the population mean. First confidence interval relied on the fact that we knew sigma, the population standard deviation, and then we looked at a problem when the population standard deviation was unknown and we only had the sample standard deviation. So now moving away from the mean, let's consider trying to find confidence intervals for the population proportion. You will recall from lecture 6 that we looked at the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat. Now interestingly we found that this distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution. If the sample size is large enough, meaning that n times p will be greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. If this distribution is approximately normal, we can see that the standard deviation of this distribution is given by sigma p hat and this formula. Note however that p is the population proportion. When we're trying to find a confidence interval, we don't know the value of p. So in order to estimate sigma p hat, which is called the standard error of the proportion, we can use sample data to calculate p hat. So in other words, to find sigma p hat or confidence interval estimation, we replace p in the formula with p hat. So now that we know how to calculate the standard error for the proportion, how do we find the confidence interval for the proportion? Well, the upper and lower limits for the population proportion can be calculated using the following formula. This is actually derived from lecture 6 where we use the transformation Z formula. And so if we rearrange that transformation to this version of the formula, we can see that Z critical is what we call the critical value of Z for the level of confidence chosen for a particular problem. P hat is the sample proportion. In other words, that could be the number of freaky fish in a bucket divided by the total number of all the fish in the bucket. And N is the sample size. That would be like all the fish in the bucket. So let's do an example. Just imagine we randomly catch 100 fish hatchlings in a bucket from a pond where some of the fish we've understood have become a bit freaky. Let's imagine out of these 100 fish in the bucket, 25 of them we observe have actually got three eyes. In other words, some of these fish are a bit sick. So based on this sample, how can we find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of freaky fish in the entire pond? In other words, the entire population of fish. Well, let's see. Well, we've been given that little n equals 100, it's the total sample size, and p hat is 25 over 100 because there's 25 freaky fish out of a total of 100 in the bucket which is 0.25 and we've been told the level of confidence is 95 percent now looking at this diagram we know that the area to the right of center is 0.475 and looking up the standard normal distribution table we find that area in the table go out to the edge we can find that the critical value for z is 1.96 and we did that earlier on. So if we know the critical value of z is 1.96 we can now calculate this confidence interval 
by using this formula. And just be careful to note that little n in this formula is in fact the total sample size of 100 fish. It's not the 25 freaky fish. So just be careful to use little n of 100 there and not 25. So if we do put the numbers in for p hat, z critical and n into this equation, we can calculate the numbers under the square root and get 0 0.0433 and the this is actually called the standard error of the proportion, the sigma p hat. If we then multiply that standard error by 1.96 and get 0.08487, that's the sample or sampling error, and we'll call that big E. So now we can calculate the upper limit of our confidence interval by taking 0.25 and adding the sampling error, and we can find the lower limit by doing 0.25 minus sampling error. So we get these two figures, 0.335 and 0.165. Therefore we can write down the confidence interval for the population proportion based on this one sample as being this. Notice it's to three decimal places so just be careful in calculating this to three decimals and making sure the standard error uses many decimal places and then just round right at the end this confidence interval calculation at the end. Alternatively, we can write the confidence interval as a percentage, as shown here. But what does this interval actually mean? How do we interpret these two numbers of 16.5% to 33.5%? can be made like this. Based on the sample, the proportion of freaky fish in the population is estimated with 95% confidence to be between 16.5% and 33.5%. So, having taken just one sample where 25% of the fish in the bucket were freaky, we've now been able to conclude or estimate that between 16.5% of all the fish in the population, meaning all the fish in the pond, are freaky, or 33.5% of all the fish in the pond are freaky. So somewhere between there is the true answer for the population proportion of freaky fish, but we're only 95% confident that that true proportion is between those two limits.